first of all, um, I'm hugely up. Do you know what the worst thing, even before we start, why did we get this lot here, right in front of me? What a nightmare. Right. Everyone else is behaving except this lot. Right, give a break. Okay. Can you hear me okay in the back? It's all right. I, I said here, not understand. But clearly that's a different thing completely with me. Um, I'm hugely honoured, uh, ladies and gentlemen, tonight to come and speak on behalf of the players to some degree um, for our memories of John King, uh, for the fantastic things he's done for this football club. Um, somebody said at the start, I didn't charge a fee for that. I mean, really? I mean, who would do such a thing? To honour the man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that's not for me. So one of the man who did so much for this club, um, and I don't think some of the time some of the players always quite realised how much he did, or the weird way in which he did it. And sadly, <laughs> I'm going to tell some of those stories in a minute. First of all, I want to tell you a, a wee, very quick, true story. A long time ago, I did another little speech at Tramier, and I had a wind up at Chrissy Malkin, and I felt terrible after because it was meant a joke. Chris, he was one of my favourite players I've ever played with in my entire career. It's true, there's no joke there. And there's a reason for it. It's because he's selfless running and the efforts he made to make other people look good. A lot of times people didn't realise what he was doing. A lot of people didn't realise that he was doing the donkey work for the other guys to make us space. He knew he was doing it, but more importantly, John King knew he was doing it. And it took a real football man to keep on putting Chris in there, in the fire room, to do all the hard work for us. And I wanted to thank him for it that time. So, number one, thank you, Chris. <laughs> number two, Chris, you're a git. I'm going to tell you why. I got asked about a few weeks ago. Move this up a bit. That's the first time in my entire life I've had to move a microphone up. <laughs> I'm going home happy tonight. I'm happy. Um, but I was asked to come and speak here. And I know that this has been well publicised and fantastic you've all came along. Um, the publicity didn't reach Scotland, to be honest. So when I phoned up and asked what was going on, I phoned Chris. And Chris said to me, Oh, don't worry, you don't need to do a speech. It'll just be the lads up here having a few stories. I went, okay, I'll not prepare anything. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Chris. Cheers, mate. It's absolutely true, isn't it? So, uh, there's a speech on the napkin beforehand. <laughs> um, I can't go any further without using a few of the phrases that we need to use uh, when we're talking about John King. And one of them is, uh, certainly in my time, before my time as well, we all found out that we were on a trip to the moon. Yeah. We went on a lot of other trips as well. Um, right, I'm going to tell a story about Magal. If anyone who wants to leave here now can leave, okay? <laughs> No, you're all right. I didn't go to my life, I was away. Um, there a lot of things, really. when I came to Tranmere, um, I'd come from Everton, and I was here a month, and one of the first things I got was uh, Aldo come up to me and he said, look, it's a bit different here. It's not like it is with like, the Liverpools and Everton's. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he goes, well, there's wee subtle differences that you have to know. I said, well, like what? He said, well, Friday night, away from home, an away game, it's a wee bit different than match preparation. I went, what's that? It was, everyone gets out and gets pissed. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the manager's at the front of the queue. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the first time we travelled away, not everyone did, a lot of lads were down there, Pub, maybe one pint, um, some of us had no pints, and anyone who didn't have a pint, like, so as four or five of us didn't have a pint, 
and he would make up for the rest of us, okay? Hey! <laughs> True. It didn't seem to stop the lads because the team spirit was absolutely brilliant the entire time that was there. But one of the things that Aldo did also mention as soon as I arrived is watch out for the gaffers team talks. They're legendary and they're a bit unusual. And I, I have been a connoisseur of the finer things in life and lighting literature. I was looking forward to And uh, Eric Nixon reminded me of his first one recently. And uh, he got to see the gaffer. And he'd been told, right, sit down. We're on a Viking boat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it either. I say, see in the front of that boat, there's a bird. There's another bird and it's got a twig in its mouth. So that means we're near land. The land, you have to remember, get the lads on the oars, run alongside them. And this is the bit I didn't get. Like Kirk Douglas in that movie. <laughs> it kind of didn't matter. We kind of got the idea. But they're quite strange, you know? And it became a thing when anyone came in, a new player came in, we all had to go up, or somebody was told to go up and say, look, great brunch, great team, everything's good. The gaffers get some unusual ways, and they're great. So we had a new player coming in, and then he was coming down from Scotland, and Tommy Coyne came to join us. And I knew Tommy, and uh, I was asked to go and... Warren's a hard word to say, but... Tell Tommy what was going on. So I said, Tom, uh, everyone's great here, good bunch of lads, and the system, Italian football, all fantastic. But uh, the gaffer, you know, it's, it's not, it's nearer Brian Clough than, you know, your normal manager here. So uh, just be ready for it. And I think John, I think he prepared a special one every single time when there was a new player. But he gave Tommy an absolute cracker. And I remember it to this day. Halfway through a team talk, Go through the team, Higgy, you're playing at the back, you know, tank, you go and kick a lot of people, all the way through the team. <laughs> Just muck about, oh, we'll score five goals and we'll be fine, you know. Real tactics talk. But halfway through the tactics talk, in the middle of the dressing room, the gaffer stops. And we think, and this is the moment. He gets down, he's on his hunkers, he's looking around, he goes, lads. Remember the Wild West movies? <laughs> oh God, he's going into it. <laughs> See when you're in your Wild West movie, you're in the bar. When you're walking at the bar, you can't turn around. So I'll shoot you in the back. You have to go backwards like that. Always keep your guns up. I'm looking across the dressing room at Tom Coyne and he's going, what? <laughs> <laughs> You get to those saloon doors, and there's those wee ones that flick open, you know, and you get your shoulders at them. You get shoulders at them. get out, but you still don't put your guns away. And then you get out, and then you can put your guns in your holsters. And that's what it's like at a short corner. John could have said, watch good for short corners, lads, but how much fun would that have been? You know, not at all. Um, <laughs> Talking about tactics, tactics were unusual. Nothing. John was a trailblazer before many of us realised it. Because um, I noticed something the other night. I, I do a lot of tactics things for different websites and for the telly and things. I'm always listening to people. And an odd thing happened the other day. I heard people. Guardiola saying something, and my mind shot back to Trouble Rovers, 1993, because I'd heard it before. <laughs> I had. True. We were, uh, I think we were playing, I think Bristol Rovers in Bristol City, can't remember which. And we always left two up, usually me and Moxie, we were rotten in the air, so just get them two out of the way. But sometimes Aldo get left up the park as well from the corner kicks against us because he's a forward and he couldn't care less about defending. But the gaffer thought, and I come and talk to a few of us and thought, do you know what? We could leave four up. <laughs> Actually, 
I have a five. <laughs> Do you know what? Even six. We only have six of the bar. No, I'm just not doing there. Anyway, two weeks ago, Guardiola, the one against for Bayern, left four men up the pitch from the corner. He was there first. Join him. great things you get about um, joining a, a great club. And I say great club comfortably. I was fortunate to play like Chelsea and Everton and things, but a great club can be many things. And one of the things is the people that surround you. And we had some characters. We had amazing characters. And we just talked to Kerry before about this. One of the things that he would be saying, John would say, go and look at such and such a player. Go and look at such and such a player. John had already watched the player. He kind of knew anyway. He wanted to know what he was like as a player, but what he was like as a bloke as well. Because it was imperative 